treat airway, then breathing, then circulation has been a truth in trauma care for almost 50 years. My name is Dr. Rich Hilton. I am a trauma surgeon. Today, I'm going to tell you about the biggest change to trauma protocols since the advent of advanced trauma life support. To understand the significance of this change, it's useful to understand the history of trauma care. Advanced trauma life support is a curriculum, a course, a set of protocols that's used to treat trauma patients. It's published by the Committee on Trauma, and anyone who is a trauma professional is well aware of advanced trauma life support. ATLS had its beginnings in a tragic event. Dr. James Steiner was flying his plane with his family, and unfortunately due to bad weather, crashed. The crash killed his wife instantly, and several of his children were seriously injured. When they finally arrived to the primary care facility, Dr. Steiner and his family received suboptimal care. And Dr. Steiner is famously quoted to say, when I can provide better care in the field with limited resources than I and my children received at the primary care facility, then there's something wrong with the system, and the system has to be changed. Well, that change came in the form of advanced trauma life support. A advanced trauma life support teaches the ABCs. And if you're familiar with the ABCs of trauma resuscitation, then you owe that to either advanced trauma life support or advanced cardiac life support. This mnemonic really shows us that the trauma provider should treat the most serious life-threatening injuries first. Injuries that can cause obstruction to the airway can lead to death faster than injuries that cause impact to breathing. But breathing can have a quicker effect on death than those that affect circulation. However, things had begun to change. The trauma experiences in the 2000s had a big impact on the trauma community. First, there was the global war on terror. An early experience taught us that the number one reason for preventable deaths on the battlefield was exsanguinating hemorrhage. And so the military moved away from airway breathing circulation to their own march protocol, where you have massive hemorrhage up front, then followed by airway, then respirations, then circulation again, followed by head injury and hypothermia. On the civilian side, there was an increase in active shooter events, which led to the Hartford Consensus and the Stop the Bleed program, a program that was designed to get bystanders and civilians the ability to stop hemorrhage at the point of injury. But throughout all of this, ATLS has remained with its protocol of airway, then breathing, then circulation but this is changing. ATLS appears to be going the way of X, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now I'm gonna make another video that talks about the whole mnemonic, but today I wanna to focus on the X and the C elements of this new X, A, B, C, D algorithm. X stands for exsanguinating hemorrhage. And the protocol would be treat the exsanguinating hemorrhage first, then go on to airway, then go on to breathing, then circulation once again. Now, if you're paying attention, you'll realize that there's both exsanguinating hemorrhage and circulation. Are we dealing with the same thing twice in the new ATLS protocols? Well, in a way we are, but X is meant to be external hemorrhage, stop the bleed, the same principles that were applied in both the March protocol and the Hartford Consensus. Apply tourniquets, put pressure or packing on the wounds and treat that external hemorrhage. When you get to circulation, that's when you're starting to do things like advanced IV access, adding blood products, TXA, maybe binding the pelvis. Those are the things you're now addressing in the circulation. Airway remains the same, breathing remains the same, and the addition of some other added factors to consider later on in the primary survey. For nearly 50 years, we've been teaching people to treat airway, then breathing, then circulation. But I'm excited to say that the changes are coming and we're gonna be putting exsanguinating hemorrhage up front and stopping the bleed. My name is Dr. Rich Hills, and you've been watching my channel, Knife Skills. Once again, thank you for your support. If you have any comments, I appreciate that you leave them down below. I read every single comment, and I also appreciate every single like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video on trauma, take a look at this video below here, where I discuss the king of operations, the trauma laparotomy. Until the next video, thank you, and have a great day.